So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Please like, share, and subscribe to get new episodes, videos, and other updates. Great. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. I'm your host, Manu Jagarwal, and today I'm talking with the founder and director of Build a Biz, Tanya Kreisinger, about how to make your social media efforts count by focusing on the right goals. In this episode, she will give us the, the rules of the road when it comes to maximizing your efforts on social media efforts. And this is a topic that every entrepreneur or professional needs to understand. So welcome, Tanya. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, we are so excited. Uh, Tanya is an entrepreneur and a well-known social media expert, and she is going to share all her knowledge and wisdom and experience today so that we can get on track with our social media goals. All right, so let's uh, dive in. So uh, first, Tanya, can you let us know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of your background and education and experience and particularly in entrepreneurship and social media? Yes, um, I will give the smallest nutshell that I can because um, there's a long road and a long story as most people on this entrepreneurial journey no, yeah. right? It's, it's never, it's never the small short story, right? Yeah, yeah. But in, in the smallest version, especially since we're specifically speaking about social media, I'll focus on that. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to be in my twenties when social media first started to become a thing, right? So I was still young enough, you know, to kind of like grow with it, um, but old enough to also kind of see value and mm-hmm. business value in it. Mm-hmm. And so when social media was first becoming a thing and you know, I'm talking about like MySpace, <laughs> like so I'm really going to date, date myself here. Yeah. Um, I was working in the music industry actually. And okay. so it was, a, it was a really interesting time in the music industry because it was also when things were becoming digitized. The mm-hmm. iPod was a new thing and it was a really scary part, like time in the industry because we didn't know how to monetize records and albums anymore. It was really like, and this was also the same time where somebody could put a mixtape out on MySpace and cut a record deal. So it was like the power of connection and audience building. That was when it really, I think, hit us like, holy crap. You know, this is powerful. This is something maybe we're not all using the right way or thinking about in the right way. So that really was, I think, the big thing that started it to, to start to look at it differently and recognize it that started my social media kind of focus within uh-huh. my career. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I ended up working with... Um, uh, in the CPG industry, which is consumer packaged goods. So I worked with people like Nestle, um, all the stuff that you see on the shelves in Whole Foods, worked with a lot of those brands to, to get on the shelves there. And then that became an entirely different way of thinking about social media uh-huh. because you couldn't just sell your bag of chips on social media because it was in Whole Foods. So you had to think about it differently. Well, what gets them to go to the store and what do they want to talk about? What's interesting about this? And so we really had to identify really a different purpose and goal of social media. So I would say that's kind of what took that entrepreneurial journey into, into social media and into marketing and that focus was really um, the novelty of the power of it. That's awesome. That's great. So how long you've been on this journey? Uh, How long you've been uh, an entrepreneur and uh, a social media? I started dabbling as an entrepreneur in 2001 and I would say officially, yeah, I've been office free since 2005. That's nice. And uh, do uh, share your story as well. Like, you know, you have a unique lifestyle. uh, You travel around the world. So uh, do say a few uh, words about that because, you know, a lot of people may find find that quite interesting and a lot of people have aspirations to do what you do. Yeah, yeah, I know it's um, it's a little trendy. Is like the uh, the digital nomad life, and uh, we were actually I was just recently featured on on GoDaddy's blog about kind of our lifestyle as well, because the digital nomad life is um, tends to be 
thought of that it's only for kind of the youngins right now, the, the 20 year olds or the 19 year olds. And so um, my family and I, we do what we call slow, or it's not what we call, other people call it too, slow travel. And what it means is that we go and we settle in a place for usually about six months at a time. You know, so it could be longer, um, but we really settle in and experience the place. Last year we were in Thailand, Vietnam, Bali. This year we were in Sweden. Now we're in Czech Republic. So we, we were in LA for some time. My husband and I met in China. So we've been doing this for a long time. And um, I'm able to, to run my business and be with my family and have these new adventures and, and things as a mom, as, as a family unit, the same way that you might see those kind of dreamy pictures of, of those 20 year olds. So I mentioned that only to say that if you might be there and maybe you're a little on the older spectrum, like I am and going, oh, that's, that's for the young kids. I'm telling you, there's a way for all of us. That's awesome. That's great. Um, all right. So now let's move on to the rules of the road on uh, about social media. So what goals uh, do entrepreneurs should set um, to, um, to, you know, make sure that they are getting the maximum benefit out of social media? Well, the main thing I think I really wanted to share today is that there are really only four goals that you can have in social media and four, it's, it's only really made up of four equal parts and they're, they're all important, but it's just one's going to be more important depending on what your specific goals are and understanding how they fit yeah. and what they are is what's going to help you know what you should be posting. Sure. So, um, the main parts really it's, it's social listening. Mm -hmm. You have social influencing, mm -hmm. social networking and social selling. Okay. So, your social listening, your social listening, if any of you are familiar with like Airbnb, mm -hmm. most of you are, I'm sure. So Airbnb is a fantastic example of social listening. Mm -hmm. Most of their social media efforts are not based on trying to show you their latest room, trying to show, you know, explain to you what they are. Okay. That's really how they manage their reputation, how they listen to problems that may come up if somebody's having a, a hard time it doesn't like something about the platform and they complain, they will respond directly. They use this platform to learn how they can improve their service, how to help their customers. It's really, um, that's their focus. You don't see a lot of other kind of like new sales, <laughs> Airbnb, you know that once you get there. So yeah. they use social media specifically for that and they improve their product by listening, by yeah. interacting with people. And that also goes for not just, negative feedback, but also positive feedback. Mm -hmm. So that's, they're a really great example of, of managing your reputation and, and listening to your audience about growing it through social listening. Okay. So that's, that's one, right? Um, the another one I said is social influencing. So this is establishing your authority. Um, usually this is really where content comes in, mm -hmm. right? So in your content, if you're share, sharing blogs and, you know, educational pieces, you are giving value through, um, through influencing, influencing an opinion, a thought process, whatever it is that your content is, is giving. Mm -hmm. It's really your area of showing, look, I'm an authority and I know something about this. I have some value that I can offer. And that is, is really the focus of social influencing, mm -hmm. which means again, the sale happens somewhere else, right? So this is where we're starting. We're yeah. starting about, so all your posts to go, if my goal is to really become this authority, then I need to think in terms of what I'm going to post that's going to allow that. So that means posting your latest coupon is not in line with your social media goals. Nice. That coupon happens somewhere else. It doesn't mean you don't use it. It happens yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then the next one is social networking. Uh -huh. And this is where you're really focusing on associating with others um, in your space you, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of times we, the mentions, if you're familiar with the mentions, you know, a little at symbol with somebody's name, you know, when you're using that a lot to really connect with others, this is a great tactic if you're trying to grow. If you're really trying to get attention perhaps of another influencer and you are sharing things that, that, you know, have been helpful to say, Hey, at, you know, Oprah, <laughs> you know, this was such a great show. Thanks so much. You might need a little more than that to get Oprah's attention, but just sure. as an example, um, you know, that's, that's another way, that's a real focus on like social influencing. So you're really, um, I'm sorry, social networking. So that's where you're, you know, trying to connect with other influencers and brands on, on the social web to, to grow 
sure. your audience, right? Yeah. And then lastly, we have social selling. And so that is where, and this again, we're not trying to make the sale. The sale never happens on social media. It's so rare the sale happens on social media. And that's, that's the whole thing we talk about. But generating leads and, and you know, prospects, like, and, you know, from the web, that's really what social selling is. It's that lead capture, that lead magnets, things like that. Got it. So, so those are the main four, right? And we can dive into those a lot more, but you know, if you want to generate leads, then you need to be employing the social selling tactics. Nice. If you want to manage your reputation, then you need to be focusing on social listening tactics. Yeah. If you want to increase your web traffic, then you're looking at social influencing tra tactics. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know, and this to what happens most of the time is that people are just, they're learning, they're reading blogs and they're like, Oh, so-and-so says this works yeah. news jacking. that's a big one. Um, that that's, um, that's taught a lot. And that's by taking something that's a current trending topic and then using it. Well, that's a great, that's great. But if it's not in line with what you're trying to do, yeah. it, you'll have people maybe interested in it, but they're not the ones who are going to leak come to a sale. They're not the ones who are going to show up on your website. You're yeah. just posting for the sake of posting. Got it, got it. All right. right. So uh, let me ask a couple of questions that come to mind. So you mentioned uh, social listening. Um, now, obviously, Airbnb is a huge company, right? Um, but mm -hmm. what about the smaller, like, you know, people who are getting started or small businesses um, who may not have a lot of people, uh, you know, reaching out to them or talking about them? So how do they, uh, how do they incorporate social listening? Um, or maybe do they even need to have a, a goal for social listening? It's going to depend on um, your audience, but yes, you can absolutely have a social listening goal as a small business. So what you're going to be doing in that case is, is really just engagement, right? So you're going to go and you're going to, you're going to spend more time probably going and reading comments, even mm -hmm. about other products, yeah, yeah. engaging with others, commenting on other people's situations, items, um, than you would worrying about what you're posting. Uh -huh. I see people, and this is like, it goes a lot like with message mining. If you've heard that concept, message mining is where you can go into something like Amazon and find a book in your industry, you know, for me, you know, say, say marketing, social media marketing, I can go and look at the books and see, what the, the biggest gay, you know, great things said about it and what the big complaints are and see in the middle as well. And I can identify from that what perhaps where this book might have missed the mark and what people, if there's, if there's a consistent thread where everyone's like, yeah, this book's great, but it went too fast or it went too in depth here and I, never, I didn't learn about this, mm -hmm. then I can go, oh, look, there's, there's a gap. There's something missing there. And the, there's a lot of people saying that enough now I'm listening. I'm social listening. So granted, they be talking about me, but wow. the time I spend on social media now becomes productive market research where I can hear what my audience or my potential audience, a shared audience, maybe they're not even mine, but listen to going, this is what they need. This, they're telling me in their own words what they want, what they want to see more of. And so social listening becomes a goal, which also means when you do post, you're wanting to post things that are bringing up these questions that are asking these types of things and facilitating this type of conversation. Yeah. Awesome. That, that makes great. sense. Um, and so then the other question I had was, um, can these goals be combined or they have to be kept separate and you know, you should only focus on one goal at a time. They can absolutely be combined. The, the focus on it, um, on how, knowing the four is really identifying what to post. And so if you don't know, like, okay, we really need, we need to, or we have this product that went out, we really need to know what people think. So we need to focus on social listening. So then we post up our latest sale and it's like, okay, well that, that's not in line with what our internal goals are. So while it might be nice to make another sale, this is really what we need to know. We need to really approach social media as, as the tool that it is, mm. you know, I, it's, it becomes I think filled with these tactics and as the, the wonderful industry of like courses and blogging, all these things are, are more and more accessible, which I love. I mean, I do courses, I have things like that, but, um, we start to jump on tactics mm -hmm. rather than true, like communication <coughs> and connection and really starting to understand like, what am I doing this for? As opposed to, oh, I heard if I do X, Y, Z, we could get, we should get this many engagements. 
Mm. A, what does that matter if you don't know what you're showing up for? Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Can you uh, give us a, like a you know, very quick guide of somebody who uh, may not be very familiar with social media uh, like I am um, and, and just say, how do we uh, you know, come up with the roadmap for our small business and say, how do we get the right mix of these goals and how do we get started? That will be really yes. helpful. I think. Well, if you've already been engaging or testing in social media, I would say one of the, the best, easiest things to do is to go back and give yourself an audit. Yeah. Go back and look at your last week or two weeks, depending on how often you post. <laughs> you know, if you're posting three times a day, maybe you just need to look at your last couple days. Um, but go back and look at them and identify which, what, what tactic you were probably unknowingly using yeah. in that post. Were you social selling? Were you social listening, influencing? Um, what, you know, what one of those were you using? And identify for each one. And look at the percentages. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, wow, I was social selling 75% of the time, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to just increase my web traffic, mm -hmm. which is more of you know, my social influencing, then you can see right there in black and white that you're employing the wrong tactic for your goal. I see. I see. So a social media audit is really the easiest thing. Um, as a matter of fact, we have a simple worksheet that explains kind of all of these tactics and has that there. So that's something I can send to you or send the link um, for your followers yeah. uh, if that's something to be helpful, um, that they can just do it themselves. And it's just a sim and really it's something you should do often because it's easy to get off the road. It's easy to get, you know, social media is one of those things that's so powerful, but as entrepreneurs, you know, I'm sure you know, you're like, I know this is important, but I also have this whole business to develop. Exactly. <laughs> work, right? Like I don't have time and usually don't have budgets for a social media manager. And, no. and, and it's scary to do that anyway, when you're giving kind of your voice and your brand voice to somebody you don't know. So that's all, that whole thing. No. So this is a really nice way to identify really where your focus is and, and like get rid of the noise. Uh -huh. Like all the other ideas that you could have. Cause you can go, yeah, that's a really great idea. Oh, we could do this web series. Oh, we could do this funny thing. Oh, it's national donut day. And then realize, but wait, what is the goal? Uh -huh. And when you know that goal, it's like putting blinders on. Right. And then all the other stuff falls away and you go, you know what? That's all great. And we can put that on our Trello board for an idea later. But right now, this is what our focus is. So this is what the type of stuff will post. And then all of a sudden it makes it a lot easier to even make two weeks or a month of your social media ideas ahead of time and even post them ahead of, you know, schedule them. So now the need for that social media manager isn't quite there yet. Right. So it kind of also helps you balance out your schedule, your planning and how to juggle this journey that is being an entrepreneur. That's great. Um, now you mentioned Trello there. So let's, uh, uh, you know, get into uh, some tactical things about social media. So what are some of the tools besides Trello that you recommend people use for, um, you know, implementing these goals? For social media? Um, well, once you do your audit and you identify your goals and kind of, you know, you and your team, whoever it is, understand like, okay, this, you know, we want to sell this, we have this product coming out, so we, are, we have a focus on social selling, um, but we also just launched this, we want to know what, what's happening here, so that means we should kind of post this. You've kind of made like your, your game plan, right? Mm -hmm. So once you've done that, then really it's, the tools at that point that I'm using is, I, like you said, Trello. I use Trello for a lot of my plotting and planning, mm -hmm. um, idea collecting. And then from there, I'm a big fan of Later. So I use Later for my Instagram. Oh, yeah. um, you know, it does Instagram stories. It does video. It does everything. So I think the big contenders are Later and Planoly. And mm -hmm. I just, I can't tell you why. I'm just a fan of Later. Mm -hmm. So um, but I hear that Planoly can be just as great. So, you know, I think it might just be an aesthetic preference. So, um, but I really enjoy later. Um, try to think what else, um, I do have a team. So I do have, uh, uh people who, who post and things for us as a team, but we do create everything together. So I do know for a lot of my clients, I recommend buffer. I like, you know, how it's kind of put together. It's really easy. It's very affordable. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's really for social media. If we go into business, like I, we need an hour and a half podcast to talk right. about like, right, oh, I am, I'm a crazy organized, like 
freak of nature. So I can give tactics for days for that kind of stuff. That's great. Maybe, maybe we'll have another podcast. For you that. might have to come back and talk about organization for entrepreneurs. Cause that is uh, that's one of my sweet spots. All right. Great. Um, now what are some of the rules that uh, entrepreneurs should follow to make sure? So, you know, once they have their roadmap, once they have done their audit to focus on the right social media goals, because a lot of times, you know, as you know, uh, we, we set out to do something, but then, you know, we start to deviate from the goal. So what are some of the tactics that, uh, that we can use to make sure that we are focused? Well, as far as the topic for today, which is these social media goals, it's really easy. You need to check back often. You should be auditing often. You should be looking at those analytics. I know it's not fun. <laughs> for some of you, it might be. I am not a numbers gal. Like I hate analytics. I really do. But they are, I always say women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. So you can think all you want, but if you're not looking at the hard truths, if you're not going in and checking your, your engagements, looking at those fun analytics that Instagram has built in or later, or any of these programs, they have analytics built in. They will tell you what people are engaging with, what people are looking at. You can't assume just because you've put out something. I mean, if you don't know about the algorithms already, go and learn about them because just because you post it doesn't mean anybody sees it. So it's really important that you look at those numbers, that you realize what, what's getting the right engagement, what's working, what's not. Um, see what posts are also, not just how many likes you have, but did you get web traffic after that? Did something actually come from that? So, um, you know, do it yourself, make it fun or find someone that you can bring on your team who likes looking at that. But that is, it's so important, but really just awareness. Like I think that goes for life and business. Awareness is number one to know where you're headed and what your goals are. So if you don't have a method or even just a simple reminder on your calendar once a month to go back and say, Hey, we got to go look at how our last posted, yeah. how this whole plot went, then there's no other tactic that's going to help you without the knowledge. Got it. Got it. All right. Now, um, what about some of the macro trends? Like, you know, uh, what social media platforms people should follow or, or is there a particular segment um, of, of entrepreneurs that they should follow LinkedIn or they should focus on Instagram? Like, is there any uh, breakup of, of these social media platforms that, that you can recommend for different type of businesses? Oh, well, of course. Yes. Yes. And no, um, <laughs> you got to know your audience. If you don't know where your audience hangs out, um, and then it does it. You could be, you could be doing great and have tons of engagement on a, on a platform. That's not your audience. You're like, well, everyone really likes my vacation photos, yeah. but they're not your audience. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course it's really important to know who they are, where they hang out, you know, in marketing in general, we kind of joke like this is, the only time and space in life where you should stereotype and kind of assume like, well, if they do this, what kind of books do they read? What kind of events would they go to? Where would that person, are they scrolling on Instagram or are they, are they checking LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. um, you know, LinkedIn is a, LinkedIn always gets touted as a to be right? A business to business platform. Yeah. But what's so interesting about that is there's still people, right? They're still individuals. And if anything, the one thing you may know about them on LinkedIn is that they're employed, right? Like if something like that's really only the big delineation, there's still a group of people, but you also understand the playing field and why people show up there. So you don't go and post on LinkedIn what you had for lunch. That's just yeah. not the conversation that gets had there. If yeah. that's something you want to talk about, then we're talking about Instagram and, and don't get me wrong. You can take a picture of your lunch and you can very much turn it into a, a good business conversation or valuable information, right? That's your level of creativity and marketing and things like that. But, um, they, I, I guess in a, if I had to like say some like across the board statement, mm -hmm. they are all great for, but it's about knowing who you are and the way that people you are like to communicate and also for yourself, how you like to communicate yeah. Twitter, is I know people who do amazing on Twitter. I tried for years and I've done social media, right? I know what works, but for myself, for my personal business, I'm just not a tweeter, okay? It's just not my thing. And so I tried to force it on organically, you know, back in 2007 and all, and it just never worked for me. And I realized I don't have to be there if that's not where I want to have the conversation. And yeah. so I really enjoy Instagram. I really enjoy, um, I still, I'm a diehard on Facebook still. Um, 
but that doesn't mean that Snapchat isn't a, still a viable place for people as well. Um, so you will have to do some testing, but I think it's a combination of really understanding your audience, understanding the way you want to have the, com the conversation, because that's a big difference too, right? Because again, yeah. what you post on Instagram doesn't fly. Like, and this is, and I will cautionary, don't do one of those services where they take one singular post and put the same thing everywhere. Because people who know that platform, people who are diehard tweeters and see an Instagram post on there, they know that's not how we talk on Twitter. That's not how, there's no, you don't put 15 hashtags. That's not what's happening. So it's like, it's like showing up, you know, to the, it's like showing up to, uh, you know, regular party in a costume. You know, everyone's like, wait, this isn't a costume party. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, it's clear to everyone that you didn't read the invite, right? So, you know, that's really what you're doing when you do one of those kind of catch all right. things. It's not beneficial for you. It actually really kind of makes you more invisible. Cause you're like, this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. So again, you know, know your audience, know where they play, know how they like to receive their messages. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like a blog versus a podcast. You know, some people want to listen to it because they don't want to read. Some people want to skim it. They don't have time to listen. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you offer both. But if you don't know until you have this conversation, and again, social listening, as we talked about, this is where you'd have that conversation. Hey, we're doing a podcast. Has anyone listened to transcripts? Because we're thinking about adding transcripts. Yeah. You know, and, so, and then you can hear what your audience says and then make a decision. Sounds good. Did that all happen? Right. I kind of went all over the place. Did that answer no, the no, question? No. This is awesome information. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people will find a lot of value. I'm, I'm learning a lot for sure. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So now do you have any more guidelines for entrepreneurs uh, to follow that, uh, you know, that will be helpful to them uh, when it comes to social media? Um, if it isn't already a given, definitely plan ahead. Um, especially again, since we're talking about bootstrapping, Trying to do your social media every day is probably one of the poorest choices that you'll make for your business as unless your business is social media management. So if, if you're not a VA service or social media management, then trying to do it every day is, is, is necessary for a good social media program, but it's not smart as an entrepreneur. So it's really important that you figure it out ahead of time, plan it ahead of time, schedule as much as you can. And then in those moments that you have an organic moment, of course, jump in there and share it. But now you're not in the middle of your day, checking the emails, you know, doing whatever your business does and be like, Oh, I haven't posted on Instagram. Where's my phone? And I mean, that's just, I see it too often and it's, it's really backwards. It really hurts your business more than you think. So have that plan ahead of time. Have this like approach this the same way like you are a big business. You know, it's you have a meeting with yourself, sit down, set an appointment, set a meeting with yourself and say, at noon on Thursday, this is my social media planning hour and that's what I'm doing. And cut out all the distractions, plan it. And then, then noon on Friday is when I'm going to actually write it and do it. Because the first hour, you're just going to figure it out. You're not going to be able to fix it all. But yeah. that's what I would say. Awesome. That's great. Um, thank you so much. Very well said. And uh, lots of uh, good information shared today. Um, I'm sure everybody in our audience uh, got a lot of value out of this interview. Now, before I let you go, can you tell us a little bit about your company, Build Biz, and you know, what kind of services you provide and how you help uh, others? Yes, yes. So, um, as uh, you said earlier, my name is Tanya Marie Figueres Kreisinger, which none of you are expected to remember that. So I go by Tanya MFK. You can find me at tanyamfk.com. I am the founder of Build the Biz. And so what we do and what I do is I am, I am a business strategist. So I am a business strategy coach and a life design coach. And life design, I know, sounds all woo. But the truth is, is that if we don't have our day-to-day -day life mastered, if we're not happy in what's going on, we're not seeing friends and family, which is too often a part of our entrepreneur journey is that we know our laptops more than our friends, yeah. um, then our businesses will suffer. And burnout does not have to be part of our journey. So I am very, when I mentioned I was crazy organized, um, basically when you meet with me, I teach you without being the crazy part, how to do the same thing. Um, we also do courses and uh, workshops as well. And as a matter of fact, this year we are having our Bali retreat where you can plan um, your business strategy all together while you're also learning to surf and have massages and do fun stuff. So that's coming up in October that we're really excited about. Awesome. So I'll, um, you know, if you, if you can send me those links, I will yes. add them to the description um, and the and the worksheet that you mentioned earlier that will be helpful as well 
Yes, yes. That was going to be your social media audit. So we'll send that on to you guys can do your audits and make sure you're focused on what you need to do and you put those blinders on and don't get caught up in the Kardashians or something. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Thank you so much, Tanya. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. So again, I'm Manoj Agarwal and thanks a lot for joining us on Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. And now, if you are an existing or an aspiring technology entrepreneur, then I invite you to check out my new online workshop, Bootstrapping Your Tech Startup Dreams. Go to go.tetranoodle.com slash boot hyphen podcast and sign up for free. I want to make sure more successful and sound decisions are made every day in your tech projects. Let's start finding solutions to your problems. So go to go.tetranoodle.com slash boot hyphen podcast and I look forward to helping you with your tech startups.